I will share a screen. All right, so the next activity, next operation is put away. Again, the four basic activities, and then there's others, and there's other equally important, but the four basic activities are anywhere else. We receive product, we put it away, we pick it, and then we ship it. So the next one is put away. Again, it's simple. This will maybe take us a half an hour to go through, and we'll um, uh, start with the next exercise. Oh, just a second. Good. Oh. All right, so put away. Different types of put away. Um, different types of, of, of techniques. Direct put away, directed put away. I'm gonna mess up, hold on a second, I'm messing up my, my uh, microphone. I don't know how I do that all the time, Francine. I, um, I, I, I need the headless, so I'm back. Uh, batched and sequenced put away and interleaving. So the direct put away is straightforward, okay? I'm gonna try and again to draw you a, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna try and, a, again to, to draw you a little map. So I do have to do, 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 try and draw it in here. So if this is our warehouse with straighter walls, most warehouses operate when the truck comes in, the product is taken off the truck and then put it in the staging area in front of the receiving and there's also staging area for in front of the shipping okay most operations are like that the product's taken off something is done with it perhaps it's checked perhaps not it's put into the staging area and then someone else puts it away remind me why we do uh, it's often done like that It's a teacher's trick to get a sip of water while you're thinking. Um, there could be like different areas that the stuff has to be put away into. So someone there kind of uh, manages things and puts it in the different. Good. Areas. Good. Yep. Good answer. Good. What's another reason? Um, also, don't they often um, count the items to confirm that the yep. packaging, the, the, the invoice is correct? Good. Another good reason. So often, as Faye said, Often, uh, many companies still, and, and I'm going to ask you a question in a second, many companies still take the product off the truck, check it for quantity, check it to make sure it's at the right place, first of all, check for quantity and quality and put it away. Do you think that's very effective? No, it's very inefficient. But if you're, not yeah. if you're not confident in the, in the accuracy, then you have no choice. Good. That's, a, that's a perfect answer, Fanny. So it's um, uh, and the next step to that will be to get confident in your supplier. But think of it: you you purchase something from a supplier. In some cases, like if it's L'Oreal or if it's you know Pfizer, we're receiving stuff from our own company. Uh, we we have an agreement with the supplier or with our plant, and we don't trust them. I, I mean, I'm exaggerating a little for for the sake of emphasis. But basically, what we're saying is, I don't. I, I don't trust you enough to just be able to take the stock and put it away. I'm going to have to check it and I'm going to have to um, uh, check the quality, check the quantity and so forth. Ways around it, again, in your, I forget your class, probably in purchasing, maybe in purchasing, when you talk about quality, you're going to be talking about the difference between quality assurance and quality control. So quality control, if you picture if this is the production line, quality control is someone on the line making sure the chocolate bars are in, in good condition and so forth. Quality assurance goes back to even before you start producing, when you're selecting your suppliers and say, I want to set up a system with my suppliers, with my vendors that are so good, that are so airtight, bulletproof, that I will be assured when the product comes in that is in good condition and in good qual quantity. Now, I'll still audit it as, you know, as is appropriate, but that's where we really want to get to, to, to answer your, your question, uh, not to, to expand on your answer, which was, which was perfect. I don't want, it's very inefficient to, it, it's possibly very inefficient to take the product off and count it and then put it away. What's one more reason? You've come up with two very, two very good reasons, by the way. Just have one more, please. It's kind of a more technical one. Sorting, 
the product because it has to go in different places. Or fair enough, fair enough, yeah, that could be, yeah. It could be different parts of the warehouse even, right? You might have different people putting away. The technical thing I'm thinking of is the equipment. So in classes uh, 10 and 11, probably in class 11, we're gonna talk about the different types of equipment, forklifts, different type of material handling equipment. Some equipment is designed to put it away in the upper reaches of a trailer, of a warehouse. That equipment likely cannot fit into a trailer because it, the, the, the tall thing is called the mast. That's what the forklifts ride up and down on. So the, the, because of the mast, that equipment does not fit into the trailer. So you may say, I gotta use two different pieces of equipment either, uh, uh, um, again, I'll go into more detail later, just a regular walkie as we call it, or something that goes into the trailer, I will take it out with that equipment and I'll very quickly unload the truck, oh, maybe 20 minutes, let someone else put it away. And I just thought of another one. Um, uh, uh, carriers usually give you two hours free time to load or to unload a trailer, depending on the carrier, depending on the type of shipment. So you don't really, I mean, I mean, if you're putting it away directly, which makes a lot of sense because I think you all see that you bypass this stage here where the bad X is going. But if you're taking it out pallet by pallet and there's 52 pallets in there, you could be going anywhere in the warehouse. It may take you longer than two hours. Ways of getting around that, no worries, but that's one thing to, to consider. Good. And I'm getting better. I don't have to uh, always toggle in and out. Directed put away is a little different. Now, most warehouses have some sort of directed put away. And I, I know the difference here is only two, two letters. Um, I think in a very simple warehouse that doesn't even have perhaps a, a WMS, not a very big warehouse, Often what may happen is the driver may go into the truck, take out the product, and then just go up and down the aisles to look for a place to put away the product. And you know what, if you're a small warehouse, that makes perfect sense. Directed put away though is different. And I hope you can see my hands up because I'm gonna be using um, um, fingers and everything. Um, so directed put away, you're using some sort of barcoding you're using your WMS, your warehouse management system, with either barcoding or even RFID, even better. The driver goes into the trailer, for instance, or to the staging, scans the barcode. The barcode tells him or her right away, okay, this is the product. And now the barcode sends the information to the WMS. The WMS says, this is a fast moving product. Remember where we want the fast moving parts by the door and so forth. So the WMS says, I will find a location for this product. If it's fast moving, I'm gonna draw my little warehouse. If it's fast moving, I wanna put it somewhere close to here. If it's slow moving, I wanna put it as far away as possible. But the WMS has this information. And I, I again, another, a class after the exam will talk about, uh, in fact, in class 15, we'll talk about computerization. But the WMS knows, gets all this information, knows what product is it, where does it fit, you know, making sure we have the right size pallet, and what place do I have empty in the warehouse? Because the WMS is keeping track of that. What locations are being put away, or I should say what products are being put away in what locations, where am I taking out? And then an instant in real time, they say, okay, this is, a, um, uh, this is a, a, an open location. So just remind me again, where should your fastest moving products be put? Closest to the door. Closest to the door. Because again, it's very likely you're gonna, you know, if it's a fast moving product, you're gonna be using it quicker than your other products. Um, as close as possible to where it is shipped and received. Batched and sequenced and interleaving. Interleaving is very interesting. I'll talk about these for a couple minutes. Um, so batched, one of you mentioned earlier, one of you mentioned earlier, we may want to batch the product away. So let's say, for instance, your warehouse is divided. Uh, most warehouses are not divided by this, but let's just say it is. I'm drawing something again, okay. I'm gonna, uh, again, I'm gonna oversimplify, but let's say all of your sports equipment goes here and all of your books go here, okay? 
So what you may want to do is if you're getting in a load of a, a trailer from a supplier or even two suppliers, you may say, I'm going to put the product, I'm going to stage it here. Remember, this is the staging area in front of the trucks. I'm going to unload the trailers and put all the sporting products here and all of the books here as a for instance and then someone maybe even two people it'll be much easier to take two pallets at a time to put them away the sporting goods and to put away the books all right um interleaving in continuous moves is a very very interesting concept and i'm not going to be able to draw it very well i'll try have you learned the the, um, the concept of backhaul yet in any of your other courses? Or do you know what backhaul is? No. Okay, good. Not good that you don't know, but good that you will know very soon. So backhaul, if I'm in Montreal, I'm a transportation company. I take a load from one of my customers in Montreal to one of their customers in Toronto. The backhaul is what I come back with. Do you, see why, and do you see why I have to load that trailer coming back? I don't have to, it's not legal. But why do I want to load that trailer coming back? Coming back empty is a waste of money. Good. Why is that? Well, you're paying for the labor and Good. the material cost of the, 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 the Good. usage, Good. but you're not getting any profit out of it. Good. Most, many of the transportation costs are fixed. So I have a driver now in Toronto, he or she has to come back. I have to pay them if there's a load in the trailer or not. The truck has to come back. That's where my customers are. I'm paying for the depreciation, the amortization, so forth. Maintenance might be a little, little lower. Uh, maybe not. Fuel might be marginally less because I have a lighter load and so forth. So I want to save money. I want to observe, I want product to come back so I can charge my customer, another customer, and pay for all those expenses. So now let's think about that concept in a warehouse. And this is a little hard to, but not hard. This isn't, this is, may not be as intuitive as um, back home uh, transportation company. Do you know, I have an idea. One of you, when you get to do the course evaluation, one of you should say, Michael's an excellent, incredible teacher, but he doesn't know how to draw. And that way, Sam will probably give me a lesson on how to use Annotate. Just a thought for you. Don't, don't, don't forget the first part. And my wife's making fun of me in the back. She is making fun of me. Or she's, or she's just yelling at someone. Um, what was I talking about? How good a teacher I am. I was touching with something else. Ah, yes, continuous move. So this is how it normally works. This is the in, jeez, Mary Joseph. And this is the out, right? Picture a much bigger warehouse. So normally what happens is someone takes the product, puts it away, right? And then comes back empty. An empty backhaul, in effect, right? Picks another product, puts it away, and so forth. So effectively, and I'll exaggerate just a little, half of his or her time is coming back with an empty forklift. So again, this fantastic WMS we have, which has all the information, stuff coming in, where to put it away, what to pick, what to ship. So why not do something like, again, this makes sense in, in larger warehouses that have the technology. Why not do something like this? Why not the person puts away the product, right? scans it, and again, I'm going to talk a little more in detail later, scans the location of the product and the product. The WMS ties it together, which is to say, my WMS now says, this location is this product. And then it says, don't go back empty. Go to, for instance, this location here, pick up a pallet, bring it to shipping, and then go back to receiving and so forth. Do you get that? Really poorly drawn, but do you get that? It's basically saying, if my entire job is to put away product, I'll be putting it away, coming back empty. Putting it away, coming back empty. So basically half my day is empty. And again, the forklift driver, just like the truck, has to come back. So why not then take advantage of the technology if you have it and say, 
don't come back empty. I will direct you to somewhere close by. You'll pick up another pallet. So this part may be empty. You'll bring the product down to shipping and empty here. Okay, very important concept, but please appreciate the fact that you need a remarkably robust and strong uh, WMS to understand all that. Good. All right. Okay, so now we're just going to watch three neat videos. <laughs> bless you, bless you. That's not a COVID disease or a COVID cough. All right. So three quick videos on put away, not the most interesting topic for a video, but I found three pretty interesting ones, okay? So let me stop sharing. How are your other courses going while I'm doing this? Going well? Yeah. Good. Have you taken dangerous goods yet? Already, yeah, I began. Okay. That's a, that's a tough, it's not a tough course, it's just it's, you know, it's not, it's something brand new for all of us. I mean, I've, I've done dangerous goods a little in the past, but. But it's tough as far. So many documents yeah. Yeah. And in yeah. French. Oh, I yeah. know. In English it's much easier, but in French it's, it's confusing. But I, I hope I'm not talking out of school here, but the exams are open book though, or are they? Yes, yeah. open book. Yeah, it makes it, makes it easier, so. Uh, for his course, my course, oh. I'll be so, I'll be surprised if half of you pass my course. That's how difficult it is. No, I'm lying. Are you serious? Um, no, I'm not serious. I'm not allowed, I shouldn't talk like that. And I'm recording myself. Jeez, Mary Joseph. Everyone will do very well. Um, okay, what do I want to do? Bear with me. What did I just do? Bear with me. I thought I had a brilliant uh, out of the way. Hello, Mike. Hello. Don't know who that was because I'm doing something, but hello. Michael Gavis. <laughs> hello, Michael. Good name. Thank All right. You. So, uh, did I? No, but you know, I'm going to start this over again. Do, do, do. Now I'm going to share a screen. Before I start this neat video, do you know what a KPI is? Key performance indicators. Good. So we're going to talk about it throughout this course. We talk a lot about it in the world in the supply chain management course. Now, specifically, since we're talking about KPIs, they're saying. What should we be measuring? Again, a KP, the purpose of a KPI is to measure something, and the purpose to measure something is to be able, better able to match it. So think about what he, this person is measuring here um, and why it's important, all right? And action.
you don't, you guys don't have to subscribe, of course. Good. So, why uh, remind me why KPIs are important? It uh, measures the efficiency of how your warehouse is being run. Yeah. And, and 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 why do you want to measure that efficiency, Michael? To to keep your car warehousing costs down. Yeah. And uh, yes. And what you're going to do is you're going to say, "This is my target, whatever it is." And I'm not reaching my target. So just like you know, we explained last class, the purpose of the midterm exam is to say, "This is where I want to be for whatever the metric is. How long it takes. This is how long it's taking. I have a problem. So let's solve the problem." Good. Um, Are you not? Are you now seeing the second film? Yes. Yes. Good. I'm still getting used to this, as you I probably figured out. Okay. Good. idea of what the uh, process looks like. Welcome back to All About SCM and Logistics channel. Hello everyone, my name is Arvind Kumar. This is the third part of the Veros process series. Till now we have discussed about what is warehouse process, what is receiving. Today we will talk about what is put away. If you have not seen the part 1 and part 2 video, do watch it first to gain better understanding of the warehouse process. 
Guys have gone through the first two parts. Let's begin with the part three. That is put away. So let's look at the simple definition of put away. The movement of inventory inside warehouse from one location to another. That is put away. So uh, wherever there is the movement of goods inside warehouse, that is called put away only. And uh, there are certain steps that we follow during the put away process. Let's look at those steps one by one. Step one is generate put list. Put list is generated and handed over to the putter. Putter is the person who actually moves these goods to the inventory area. He requires certain information in order to do this physical put away process that is mentioned on put list. For example, SQ name, UPC. UPC is the unique product code that is printed on the product and its quantity and the location where he actually needs to do this put away or the movement of goods. Step two is the physical movement of goods. Simply these goods are physically moved to their uh, defined location that is mentioned on the put list with the help of MHE that is material handling equipments. For example, hand pallet truck, forklift. These equipments are used to stack these material from uh, dock to the inventory locations. Let's move to step three. That is system stock updation. Stock kept at location needs to be further updated into the system. For example, if we have kept four quantities of NESQ at a defined locations, we need to update that particular SQ's quantity at that defined locations into the system in order to avoid the inventory mismatches. So this is uh, all about the full put away process. Now let's discuss some common mistake done at the time of put away process. Goods are counted before moving from dock to inventory area. Wrong counting will lead to inventory mismatch. Second is input of wrong quantity in system. This will also lead to inventory mismatch. Third is stock kept at location A but updated in location B. Definitely if you have kept 4 units of any SQ at location A but at the time of stock updation you have wrongly scanned the location. So that will definitely affect your location sanity. Fourth is product got damaged due to handling issue. So you need to handle the products with care to avoid any damages or the losses. So this is all about uh, put away process. Stay tuned guys. Thanks for watching. All right. Do, do, do. Let me stop sharing. Good. So there's like a thousand videos out there. I just want to get, kind of give you a decent, uh, just for, I just want to give you a sense of it. Uh, I, I should have put the third, the first video third, the importance of it, although this fellow talked about as well. If you make a mistake, no, you tell me, what can happen if you make a mistake putting away products? What are the bad things that can happen? Well, it takes a lot longer for you to uh, send the product out if someone asks for it or they need it. Good. Why does it take longer, Michael? Because you, when you're looking for it, you can't find good, it. Good. Good. Yeah. Or, and I know I should I'm turn the iPhone. Or the wrong product's been put in the right in the right place. If that makes any sense. So again, we're scanning everything. You go to a location. It says, uh, I'm sorry, your your W W MS says go to this location to pick up mice. You go to that location. It's something else, right? someone put it away uh, incorrectly. Two things that can happen, none are very good. One is you pick the product anyways because you don't know it or you're too lazy. That means you're gonna ship the wrong product to your customer. A slightly better outcome is that you go to that location where you've been told to go, where you've been directed to go, it's the wrong product. Then you notice it and you go back and you, you go back to your inventory, uh, the coordinator, go back to your supervisor and say, hey, look, there's a problem here. Good, let's do this. Um, we're going to do an exercise at the end of class, or at the end of the two hours. Let's start on class six now. So uh, 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 put away very straightforward. Uh, it's a simple. Um, uh, it's a simple, simple activity. Now we're going to start talking about case picking. Uh, excuse, uh, the next operations, which is picking orders, order picking. We start talking about case picking, small item picking, and order picking itself. Okay. So we'll do this for about um, uh, 20 minutes or so. We'll take a break. So the first one, case picking. Actually, even before we get there, let me draw you something. For, let me draw something for you, and I will go back to my share screen. 
And then one day you find 10 years of cut behind you. Anyone uh, watch the hockey game Saturday night? My husband. Good. Was he happy? Yeah. Was he happy? I don't know. <laughs> I was very happy. It was great. Yeah, it was. I don't know if we'll win. Actually, who cares if we win? It's, it's hockey for crying out loud. Although, you know, I should tell you, on your exams, if you write somehow, when you're talking about putting away product, for instance, and you say, you know, here are the theories of putting away product. And by the way, I love the Montreal Canadiens. I'll remember that. All right. So the next um, uh, case picking, small item picking, and order picking. Let me t let me tell you the difference between the two, or the the three. Oh, uh, clear that. So at, a, at at the first level, we have eaches or units, and I use an example of shampoo. Okay, so this pretend this is a bottle of shampoo. So we call that an each. I really wish I could write here. I'll let you guys and girls write. Okay. Eaches often, but not always, go into boxes. Boxes often, but not always, go into cases. And then cases often, but not always, onto pallets. Onto pallets, yeah. So if you if you pretended I knew how to draw, that'd be it. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about then. Um, I don't know why it start with case in. Uh, in a warehouse, we will rarely pick eaches. So again, to use an example of L'Oreal, we don't allow our customers to order one bottle of shampoo. We would have a minimum order quantity, either dollars or, yeah, it's usually dollars, or um, quantity. We'd say, for instance, the minimum quantity you can buy is a case of shampoo. And if you want less, as a, for instance, you go to a wholesaler or a distributor. All right, good. So um, we'll start with the case picking. Then small item picking. And then we'll just talk about order picking in general. Uh, this is a uh, now classics. Let's do this. I want to make sure we do this properly. Let's take a quick five minute break, okay? Uh, because I'm, I'm switching classes quickly, we'll take a five minute break, go pick up the notes from class six. I just put them online. We'll come back. We'll do that for about 45 minutes and then we'll do an exercise. Okay. So five minute break, go to the bathroom if you have to get some more water. Or if I have to, I'll turn off my camera for five minutes. Okay. And we're, we're about to start class six notes. We'll be back very soon.
All right, now this is, whoop, let's put my hands. Now this is a quick little break. So let's do a little more theory and have a short little break soon, and then we'll uh, do some exercises for the rest of today. I will share again. I forgot to stop the recording, which isn't great, but okay. Um, bon. So case picking. Different types of doing, uh, different ways of, of, of case picking. We'll look at pick face palletizing system, downstream palletizing, and direct floor loading. So again, I, I think for a lot of you, maybe for all of you, this is um, this is new. These are all new, uh, new words, new technologies, uh, new concepts. So keep track of these words. Um, keep track of these words. Uh, keep track of these phrases, keep a little glossary if necessary. So if you don't understand something, uh, definitely by the end of class, I hope you understand it. Pick face is important. That's the term we use again. So imagine when we go to a Costco, pick face is that first level, the first level that you pick from. Okay. Uh, when you and I are in um, Costco ourselves, you and I pick from that first level. It's called a uh, so it's called the, the, the pick face. Different ways of doing it, pallet jack picking, pallet trains, lift truck picking, et cetera, et cetera. I'll go through these in some detail. I think what I'd like you to take away from, from this, and th th this next probably half an hour, 40 minutes, is pretty technical stuff, pretty academic stuff. What I'd like you to take away from it is um, uh, what the differences between picking cases which we're doing now, then picking small items or boxes or even each is unusual anywhere else, and then picking pallets. So pallet jack picking, uh, I should take this out. We didn't do walkies yet, we'll be doing that later. A walkie, let me show you, let me show you, I'll show you that right away. So this may be a new term for you. Good. This is a walkie. I'm going to go through this in a lot more detail in class 11. Uh, it's called a walkie, even though this is an electric forklift. Maybe it's propane. No, it looks like electric. That's the battery there. The reason why we call it a walkie is the driver was no longer driving. The operator was actually pulling it along. Again, not pulling it, guiding it along, walking with it. All right. So a pallet train would be... Typically, you see where the one pallet goes here. A pallet train would be like a train of two or three pallets, okay? And how we would use that is, right, how we would use that is like this. So here's your, here's your, uh, here's your walkie, or here's your pallet, I should say, your, uh, to the walkie. And then you would be pulling, my little example here, three pallets behind you on, on wheels, of course. And then what you would be doing is as you were going up and down the pig face. So not dissimilar to what you and I would do in a Costco or in a Rona or in a Home Depot, the person's walking up and down the aisles and picking product for this order, called order A, for this order, order B, for this order, order C. Very, very common in the grocery industry. And the reason why it is, is a grocery store has, I should know this answer, I don't, hundreds if not thousands of different SKUs, probably thousands of the larger grocery stores. So when they're picking product for virtually any grocery store, unless it's the largest type, they're picking a box of each, a case, in this example, a case of each. So pallet jack picking, oh, no, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. What I'm talking about here, excuse me, is a pallet train. Same concept though. A pallet jack is just one pallet bringing it along. Excuse me, I, I got them mixed up. I was getting too excited there. Uh, a pallet jack is you just, someone's car horn is going off. One of the disadvantages of working from home. Not my car though. Uh, a pallet jack is you, you're taking a walkie and you're taking um, one pallet on that walkie and loading orders or in, the, in some cases double. A pallet train would be three or more so then you're pulling it behind a walkie again, or you're guiding the walkie, the forklift, with two or three or four or five pallets behind it, like a train. 
and you're putting orders on each pallet. Um, lift truck picking. So I know I've just said that we normally pick from the pick face, all right? So we pick from the pick face, the first level, but in some cases, why not pick from the second or the third or the fourth levels? So this, this and the, um, uh, the order picker trucks allow the operator to pick from, if this is the, the pick face here, to pick from the second, the third, the fourth, and fifth. Do you see a potential safety issue? You're going to have pallets uh, falling all over each other because of not having support. Good, good, good. What about the order picker? Remember, the order picker is going to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth layers. They must do it in a way where it's keeping balance, I guess, or? Well, how would you, fall. sorry, I missed that? They could fall. Good. Yeah. So the, the order picker could fall. And how would you resolve that? How would you prevent that? Safety belt. Good. We call them, um, well, safety belt's a good word. Uh, we also call it a fall arrest system. That's just a fancier word. I think I put one of these online. I will show you now. Okay, let me just pick one here. There's none in a warehouse, but oh, here's a good one. Do you see that? Do you see the picture of the fellow with the uh, thing on? No, we're only seeing the presentation slide. Good, thank you. That's why, I, again, Samantha hired me for my looks, not for my IT ability. So do you see it now? Yes. Good, thank you. So this is a fall arrest system or a safety belt. It's hooked up to something, likely the forklift itself, between the legs, over the shoulders, and hooked up to, to, to something else. So if something were to happen, if something were to happen, if the fellow would slip, if the fork, if something would happen, he or she would just be like dangling in the air. So that's how you would resolve that. I don't know the rule in Quebec. In Ontario, it's anything more than nine feet above the ground, you have to be protected by a fall arrest system. So Quebec, I'd imagine, three meters. Quebec, I'd imagine, would be something similar. Good, so that's how you would prevent uh, something like that happening to a, uh, an operator. Other systems, again, I don't talk about these too, too much. These are a little too, uh, 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 too, a little too complicated, not very, um, uh, 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 not very uh, widespread. End of aisle case picking and robotic case picking. I will show you the robotic, but that's kind of neat. End of aisle. The pallets are brought to the operator uh, 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 by a, a, a pulley, uh, not a pulley system, a conveyor system, easier to pick. Robotic case picking though, I'll show you that. Again, all these videos are online, so if you're unable to, um, um, on Leah, so if, you're on, if you don't have the time to watch them now, I encourage them to watch you later, but we will watch this. This is neat. When you want, you know what? I have to go to my class six notes. I gave you the right notes and I took the wrong ones. So I'll go to class six. manufacturer in Paramount, California, built a new filling line to produce quart bottles up to 160 per minute and gallon bottles up to 60 per minute. With limited space in the facility, installing a traditional drop packer was a challenging option. CMJ went to the experts at Fanic America Authorized System Integrator Trans Automation Technologies for an alternative robotic solution. The robot cell needed to be capable of case packing both the quart size and gallon size bottles. So Trans Automation Technologies developed two end of arm tools that rest in a stationary tool fixture and are accessible by the FANUC robot. 
The two end of arm tools were designed and built with ease of changeover in mind, employing a bayonet style connector with quick release clamping mechanism. End of arm tool changeover for this system requires minimal effort from a technician to secure the clamp and connect compressed air and control power. Filled motor oil bottles are inducted into the robotic case packer by dividing the inbound product stream equally into four parallel conveyor lanes. The robot selected for this case packing cell is Fanix M710IC50H 5-axis articulated robot engineered for extremely high speed, application flexibility and reliability. The FANUC M710IC series delivers repeatable precision and unparalleled performance. The robot end of arm tool for the quart bottles uses 12 individual vacuum cups fixed in a 3x4 pattern for picking the bottles by the top of the bottle body, not the cap. The vacuum mechanism then retracts, lifting the bottles into the metal frame for stability while in motion. At full production speed of 160 bottles per minute, the FANUC M710IC50H robot is performing 14 cycles per minute. When the system needs to change over from quart to gallon-sized bottles, the robot's tool change program is selected by the operator. Then, the FANUC M710IC50H robot moves to the tool stand and deposits the quart tool into its storage position on the fixture. The robot pauses while the operator enters a cell, releases the clamp device, and removes the compressed air and electrical connectors. The robot tool change cycle is restarted and the robot automatically extracts the bayonet mount, then moves to the gallon fixture and reinserts the bayonet. The operator closes the clamp, attaches the air and electrical connectors, and then presses start on the robot pendant. The entire tool changeover process takes less than five minutes and requires no tools. Gallon case packing requires the oil bottles to be picked up by the handle, three bottles per pick. The handles are clamped with a gripper device, then retract upward into the tool for stability and travel. CMJ has two case sizes for the gallon bottles, a three gallon case and a six gallon case. The six gallon case shown here requires two robot cycles to achieve a full case. With this intuitive and efficient robotic system, Trans Automation Technologies was able to meet and exceed CMJ Brothers automation goals. Not only were they able to develop a robotic case packing solution that would meet the high throughput rates required for the quart bottles, but also capable of handling the heavy weight of the gallon bottles, all while eliminating health and safety hazards posed by performing this difficult, repetitive task with manual labor. To learn more about FANUC America Authorized System Integrator Trans Automation Technologies, please visit transautotech.com. All right. So what are some of the advantages of that, do you think? Oh, not to turn it off. What are the advantages, but also what, what's the disadvantage? Sorry, I'm going to stop this video. Uh, well, disadvantage would be like, you know, if, uh, uh, machinery malfunctions. Good. Very good, yeah. Uh, you, know, you have to get it fixed, uh, have replacement parts available. Uh, yeah. We have specialized technicians who are able to fix that. Not everyone can fix something like yeah. that. Good. Expensive, probably to fix. Good. What's another issue? Well, I think the biggest issue is the lack of flexibility. The machine is designed for those two specific cases in mind. But if ever the company changes size of boxes, size of containers, anything, the entire system would have to be redesigned. Good point. Except you're right. It doesn't have to be redesigned; just reprogrammed. 
So the way they would program this is right now, I, I very, very precisely, I want to pick up three by four. You could case, you could change the case dimensions and, and do something different. Not easy, not as easy said as done. But do you know what I mean, uh, Fez? Yeah, so yeah. So right now, now, right now it's designed to do this. You can, no, I'm sorry, not designed, it's programmed to do this. Pretty easy to make the design to, to program to do something else. But certainly more complicated than having a human uh, pack Absolutely. a box. Yeah. Absolutely. What are the advantages of it then? Labor costs uh, yeah. are down because you're not paying someone labor wages. It's probably more cost effective. Yeah, very good. And as we say, uh, um, as we say, machines don't take vacations and stuff like that. So good. You, you know what? As you take your Suzanne's course, you're doing an accounting course, so you will be. Um, it's a straightforward calculation. How much can I do myself, or uh, uh, how much does it cost per per unit? In this case, we would probably measure per case. If we do it manually, you know, people doing it, how much would it cost with the machines? Keeping in mind what I think it was Michael said earlier, things like, um, excuse me, keeping in mind things like having extra parts on uh, 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 parts on hand, having trained people, and so forth. So good. All right, we're doing very well. So that's robotic case picking. The next type of case picking is called downstream palletizing systems. This is really a fancy way of saying downstream means here, sending it down somewhere else. Okay? So pick to conveyor, pick car, automated case dispensing, layer packing. I'm going to concentrate on the first two. First one's called pick to conveyor or pick to belt. I know you can see me, so I'm not going to go over here. Two important terms. All this means is, is they're all English words. You're just missing verbs and, and pronouns and so forth. All this means is someone's taking product, putting it on a conveyor or a belt, is another word, for, uh, the way of saying it, and sending it down. All right? Here's another nice video. Again, I put all my videos online on Aaliyah. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. We're doing very, very well. You're good kids. Give yourselves a hand. Oh, no, I have to do this first. I'll cancel this. I'm getting better at this. That's what I tell myself. Okay, so this example is it's, it's not automated. What's the word? Animated, which is not always fun to watch, but it, it, will, it explains very, very well what pick to conveyor or pick to cases.
All right. So that's pick to conveyor or uh, so I have to turn that off. If you turn off, it always so it's pick to conveyor. One more. So I want you to keep all these in mind because I, I, I can tell you now, one of the exam questions is, I'm gonna ask you to describe, to pick one of these and describe it and why you like it. So think about, uh, so far we're seeing picture conveyor. Next couple of classes, we're gonna see two other more techniques. Don't worry about now, pick to light and pick division. I'm gonna ask you as an exam question to pick one of them and explain why you prefer that method. So here's another example of pick to conveyor. Did it again, sorry. I change my notes every every year and I have to take over the new, new ones, so. All right. We get there in a second, sorry. I'm just making sure my notes are always updated. So pick to car and automated case dispensing, not, not too, too concerned about that. Uh, nice to know, but we're not gonna spend any time on it. It's kind of a little too much. Layer picking systems. So again, I, I, I'm gonna ask you the same question, you know, with the advantages and disadvantages, and you're gonna give me the same answers. Uh, uh, save labor, save time and so forth. Two more videos. This system takes an entire layer, okay? So instead of taking it up a case at the time, this will take an entire layer. Ah, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Bear with me, sorry about this. Go. Hi, my name is David McClellan. I'm the Nestle Distribution Centre Manager at the Arndale Park facility in Western Sydney. What you see is uh, our new installation of the layer picker. The layer picker is uh, a project that we've had in mind for a long period of time. The primary objectives of this project were to drive uh, a much improved safety environment for our people, to reduce cost and to improve our quality of service to our customers. The distribution centre here, we produce and uh, deliver to our customers full pallets of stock. Uh, that represents around about 80% of our volume. The remaining 20% of our uh, volume gets picked through the layer picker and through voice picking. At Arndell Park, we used to manually handle around about 5 million cases per year using a storeman to transfer it from the Nestle pallet onto the customer pallet. The technology that we've implemented here has enabled us to remove 4 million of those cases from being manually handled to be automatically handled. So this is the start of the process. Basically we induct pallets from the buffer area here into the induction point. The pallets are then fed through into the system. The operator is directed to remove a certain number of layers of stretch wrap from the donor pallet prior to it actually being fed into the robot to be picked. Stock is uh, fed into the module. Um, it has two options. One, it would be fed to the robot for, for immediate picking, or it would be fed to an interim buffer position. The required layer is picked from the donor pallet onto the customer pallet. 
uh, and that customer pallet is continued to be built from various different donor pallets. So when the stock is no longer required, it exits the module and it's returned to the buffer storage until the next day's run. This is a, uh, this is a four axis robot, which means that essentially the, the head is going to stay parallel to the, to the uh, conveyor system at all times. The actual head that is picking up the layers is designed with a, uh, a vacuum system and a set of bellows. The bellows will close around the, uh, the product, forming a seal, and then the vacuum system, which is very low pressure vacuum system, puts just enough pressure to pick up the product. So the, the bellows are not actually applying any pressure from the sides. All of the picking up is done with the vacuum of the system. That then moves around, can put it down. The innovative thing about uh, this particular kind of head is that it's able to pick up almost anything. Even if there's a hole in the uh, pattern of product on the, uh, on the layer, this particular layer picking head is able to turn off the vacuum over that hole so that it only per it's only putting vacuum on the product itself. It's not just cartons, this will also pick up, uh, it's picking up bags of dog food, bags of oats, cans of Milo, cans of coffee, bottles of sauce, cans of dog food, boxes of noodles. Essentially it's, it's picking up over 95% of the range of Nestle's products in Australia. The system has four order positions which allows us to build four orders concurrently. In this system we've got, we've got four locations that the robot can pick to. Uh, one of those stations also doubles as an empty pallet station so that some of the orders will have a, an empty pallet between layers of product because that's what some of the customers require and the robot will pick that empty pallet from the conveyor, put it on top of the product and then put more product back on top of that. So any, any orders that aren't completed by the layer picker uh, will be discharged from the system onto a pallet which we apply a license plate to and that pallet will then go through to our voice pickers to complete the rest of that pallet.